Welcome to the Dumb Idea Podcast with Mike and Alex. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video or podcast on any platform that you're listening on. Please visit us at www.dumbideapodcast.com. All right, welcome back. Another episode. Uh, want to thank uh, Port Tech Limited Wine and Spirits in the Baydell Plaza in Arnold, Maryland, 21012. For sponsoring this episode, we really appreciate it. If you can, head on over there. Uh, they, they do curbside pickup. Uh, right now, though, they have an excellent selection of their spring wines. Um, they just got a lot of them in stock. Um, they're also, I believe this is the time of year when they get a lot of their spring craft brews in. So if you're looking for something different to drink, um, rather than the, uh, you know, the, the bush lights and the bushes we've been putting out there lately, <laughs> if, if you're looking for something a little bit different, looking for uh, a ghost, uh, sour ale, yeah, with a little tart, th- they've got some nice new ones that come out in the spring. They'll get some new ones that come out in the summer too. Uh, which we're probably going to try a couple of them in some episodes coming up uh, in the next month or so, maybe not, probably next two months um, before they get in their fall stuff. But right now they got a nice spring selection coming out, but their spring wines right now are really nice. Um, huge selection of wine. Probably, I, th- I think they got like three or four rows of just wine. Um, and also they, I, I was looking at their, their stock of uh, spirits the other day and I couldn't imagine like, I didn't realize there were that many brands of, of like scotches, gins, it, it, vodkas. Like there's so many, um, so they, they've got quite a huge selection of anything you could want. Uh, so head on over there, Portac, uh, wine and uh, spirits. Um, even if you if you're kind of new and you don't know what you're looking for, they are more than helpy. Hap, uh, helpy. They're more than happy to help you. Uh, pick something new or if you let them know what your taste buds like maybe they'll they'll steer you in the right direction um so head on over there and uh, help out a local business in our area the big news right now uh deals mostly with uh the supreme court and they are apparently getting ready to uh make a decision uh on whether Roe versus Wade will be overturned or not. Now, how the decision or the majority decision got leaked out, that's a different topic. We'll talk about that. But it seems as though they are possibly leaning to overturn Roe v. Wade, uh, which, of course, has got a lot of people up in arms about that. Um, We're going to talk about that and maybe some larger implications of what this does for the midterms in 2024 but um yeah we've we've talked about our political leanings in the past and we've actually got a friend of ours on the show uh goes by smitty uh one of our buddies around here he um knows quite a bit about the politics former he's for uh, a former new englander uh so he he's uh one would think he would have a little bit of the liberal leanings like Mike and I seem to have, which surprised both of us. Um, do you want to say hi to the people? Hey everyone, thanks for having me. The six people. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> sure. Uh, so I, one of the things, that, I guess, the first thing. Let's just get right into it. I've never in my lifetime seen any kind any kind of Supreme Court decision paper leaked before the decision was actually made public right and not only a leak but even engaging with the media at all from the supreme court and it, it's one of the few you want to say it's an apolitical institution because that's what it's supposed to be that's how it's designed to be that's why they have lifetime appointments but just look at the at a supreme court uh, confirmation hearing, and that's one of the most divisive, politically charged things there is. So you, you know, it, it's the institution supposed to be, but apolitical. But getting everyone into it 
is 100% partisan and political. Sure. So, you know, they changed the rule on the uh, on the filibuster uh, to get, you know, they've done all kinds of things for, and then the hearings themselves, uh, the latest one with, can you define a woman? And then the one prior to that with, with Amy uh, Coney Barrett and going after her for her religion and Brett Kavanaugh for, you know, accusing him of being a rapist. and That was a fun one. Yeah. For liking beer. Yeah. I get it. I like beer. Me and Squidgy and, and <laughs> Billy and, and Tito, we drank beer and lifted weights. So, <laughs> what a um, that was. But, uh, and his calendars and all that. And then, you know, when they grilled Clarence Thomas uh, many, many years ago, and he's back in the, in the, under the heat of the, you know, drawing the, ire of the left from his wife right yeah yeah Yeah. so but shocker she's she's not apolitical she has political leanings go figure right she's a human being like i didn't really think that was going to be news but it is yeah so it's you know and then but so it's surprising in a way because that was one of the last things that you know you could you know both sides could go through and say Okay, we're fighting about this and it's charged and blah, blah but you know what the Supreme Court spoke, so let's put it to bed. You know. Um so, you know, the 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 left, you know, when the Supreme Court decides something that's Second Amendment, the left kinda of says okay, and then when on the right, you know, with Obamacare, the right's like, Okay, it's been decided. So Yeah, it, and I guess there's a lot of things to hit on here. That's why I was I was gonna try and like compartmentalize a lot of it. So for example, like the leak itself. Right, never seen that. So obviously you, somebody had an agenda on this, right? You trying to say that somebody colluded? I don't. I, I'm. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not smart enough to know exactly what colluded means, other than two people getting together. It's just been a funny word we talked about the last several years, and sure. and I see a lot of it in our own. We we talk about how uh, we accuse people of of colluding with other governments and, and their own elections. And it seems like we collude in our own elections every year and every other foreign country's elections too. Well, that, so that's a good point. It, it, maybe not directly onto that point, but obviously with the midterms coming up, there was the, the talk of the red wave coming, right? And this obviously is the Democrats top issue is abortion. Um, pro being pro choice. That's one of their. If you had to name three topics that they were about, that's the top one. Is pro choice. What better way to maybe mitigate a flood from the conservative side at the midterms than to give a reason for your base to come out and vote when they probably weren't going to, like. What if it could stem the tide? What if you could not lose the Senate, even if you're going to lose the House? Or what if you don't lose the House, but you lose the Senate because you because you really revved up the base on one of your top three topics? Mm-hmm. Because, so, and the thing is, yeah, it, it'll rev their base up. But when you look at what Americans today are polling, you know, what, there's, what the polls are saying their best, their top concerns are, it's the economy, it's, it's, it's food prices, inflation, get fuel. Um, and, you know, let's be honest, this, this uh, administration has been a complete disaster for the last two years. I mean, it's just been one failure after another after another. No, don't be, <laughs> don't be mean to Jimmy Carter 2.0. Come on. So well, the, the polls are actually quite interesting. Um they're horrible. So, <laughs> so essentially, support their support for abortion, and this is an Associated Press NORC poll in June, found 87% support abortion when the woman's life is in danger, 84 per, uh, 84% support exceptions uh, for the case of rape or incest, and 74% support uh, abortion if the child would be born with a life-threatening illness. Then... Where the support drops is um, uh, 61% believe abortion should be legal during the first trimester. So that's still in favor of pro-choice. But only 34% in the second trimester and 19% in the third. So So essentially it's like they're pro-choice, but. 
Yeah. What my question is: What type of person supports abortion in the third trimester? I mean, we all have kids, mm-hmm. so we've seen the the uh, sonograms and, and stuff at the third trimester, and that's that's a little person in there. I, I don't know how you could reasonably go in there and say, "Yeah, you know what? I I think I changed my mind," or whatever your whatever your. I don't want to. I don't want to minimize their choice, but I mean, like it's the, the argument here is a clump of cells all the time. It's a clump of cells. Okay. Well, that particular clump of cells looks an awful lot like a little baby, yeah, like a little person. So how can you go ahead and, and go through with that? I, I don't get that one. I think there are extremists and, and, you know, personally, we've said it before. Like I, I find the practice abhorrent. But I also don't like the government putting its nose where it, you know, to me, it's a, it's a, it should be a private issue between a mother and her physician, not necessarily a, you know, a, a, the government, because the government can't do anything right. Yeah. They're, they're the list of things that they're involved in that they do well is getting smaller and smaller. And the list of things that they get involved in is getting higher and higher. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you and I have talked about that before and that we're both. We're both pro-choice. Well, we're probably pro-life in our own personal lives, but pro-choice in the fact that we don't want to push our beliefs on others, right? And we don't want the government to be involved in that decision. Mm-hmm. For me, it's kind of it's almost like ma- uh, marriage. Yeah, I don't, the, the, I, I, don't, I don't think a marriage certificate should be at the state or federal level. It's basically. For, for their purposes, for state and federal government, it's basically a business contract between two people. Yeah. So you could file taxes together. and But, I mean, there's also the part where the, with the medical situation where only families allowed in, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I don't feel like, for me, marriage is more of a religious concept, whereas a civil union is more of that contract between two people. Right. To live life together or, or have a rights uh, amongst them themselves, between themselves, right? Um, in the state size or the federal government size. So for me, the my pro-choice part of it is twofold. One, I don't want the government in your business. Mm-hmm. And everyone's going to say, well, what, what about murder, man? You know, the federal government should not want murder. No, like, no, come on now. Like, let, let's talk about some different things here. Like, There's yeah. two different things. But like, I, I definitely feel like that's a personal decision. It's very personal. Yeah, but you talk to women. No woman goes on skate. There's no, there's no undoing the mental scars. Yeah, once they go through it, either way. Yeah, but I, but I and I and I think what people really need to do is to look at this decision and see what it is. It's not, of course, the the left is melting down over it, but it's not outlawing abortion. It's just returning the decision back to the states. Yeah, but the problem with that is is that. I believe there's already 22 states that have an outright ban on it. So essentially the women in those states now don't have the same rights as women in other states. Mm -hmm. And that, that something that that major could be a a fairly big issue. I mean, it's, it's almost like saying, I don't know. I I don't know what else you can really compare it to, but I mean, it's almost like saying you, you can't get, a flu shot in one state, you can get in another. Right. Well, I mean, you you can't buy weed in one state, but you can in another. Sure. Now, except this has to do with like and, a very a very invasive procedure. Yeah. <laughs> um. But if you want to talk about it constitutionally, you know, uh, if you don't like the gun laws in Maryland, right, move to Virginia or North Carolina. Yeah. Um, and I guess before this, though, was was there any really ma- a major difference between the states until this comes about, right? I mean, other than th- there's no state that's outlawed guns outright, right? Uh, New York, Massachusetts, and California are, and Maryland are pretty, pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. Well, Maryland's, see, I don't agree with Maryland. Maryland's fairly, I, I think Maryland's fairly easy. You go, you, you go take your one day course for a handgun, mm-hmm. and you can go buy a handgun. And long gun, you don't even have to. You can just go and get one. The, the, with Maryland, 
the issue more becomes of uh, concealed carry. Right. But even that's kind of easy to get around. Well, I mean, all you got to do is when the guy comes to your house, you say, I'm a small business owner that carries cash. I'm like, okay, here's yeah. your concealed carry permit. So the thing with, so New York and California or New Jersey are terrible. Maryland is not quite as terrible, but, and I don't want to bore people with, with, uh, getting into all kinds of technicalities and, and things when it comes to, to guns in this state. But if you're to say the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed, that's what the constitution says, right? So if you wanted to exercise your rights at, under the constitution, it's much easier to do it in, say, a constitutional carry state where, like, you, a right is given, is not given, a right is inalienable, a right is, comes from, from God or higher power or whatever right. someone wants to say. So then, therefore, the state comes in, should be able to infringe upon that right. Sure. So, but the right to abortion was never enshrined in any document. Um. And I'm not really going one way or the other against it. I think I'm pretty clear on where my position stands. Again, the government really doesn't do anything well. Um, Plus, there's three men here. So do the, do, yeah. do a lot of women really want to hear three men no, talk about all. abortion? Well, you're also talking, I mean, <laughs> at least, I mean, two of us are pro-choice. Yeah, I'm so, pro-choice. So, okay, so you got three pro-choice guys here. Yeah. So not that we're... Not that we have the mentality of women, but no, but we. I think most women would fall on the pro. Well, I shouldn't even say most women. No, that's abs- not true either. I guess there's some there's some pro life women. Um, well, I guess the question though is like, we've got a country of how many? What do we have? Three hundred and thirty million people. How do you, I mean? I, I know it makes things. It, it makes it easier when things are black and white, but they're not. They rarely are. Everything happens in the gray, and this is a clear gray area where it's. It's easy to say something until it happens to you, and there's always certain circumstances. And we're also the age where, 40 years old almost, uh, where our wives and and uh, friends of ours are trying to have kids, and they're having kids a little bit later than it used to be, and you know, 20, 30 years ago. And there's a lot more complications we're sort of seeing amongst friends of ours, either getting pregnant, staying pregnant. And throughout the duration. So there, there's a lot of factors that go into it, I'm sure. And well, sure, would it be ideal not to have abortions? Of course. It'd also be ideal to have a mother and a father. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, I don't, I don't know where you draw the line, though. And that's, yeah. I guess that's the, the thing is most people think it should be allowed for certain cases, but where do you draw that line? And Well, I, I know, the, the, look, there's obviously a vocal group out there that was anti Roe v. Wade, but there was another poll done. Seventy percent of Americans didn't want the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. It it was kind of like okay, this is settled. This is this is done. The country went through this. Let sleeping dogs lie. Mm-hmm. But obviously, some people feel a different way about that, right? I feel this could. For the Republicans, though, I feel this could be the worst part, point in time to have this decision come out. Oh, yeah. It definitely gives the be- Democrats because, a shot in the arm. Because you had a they layup in November. Like, a, like there was going to be no easier path to taking the House and the Senate in November if they just didn't say anything, didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And then this comes out. Now, some of those swing votes, you know, well, maybe, they, they, maybe they flop a little bit. Well, what when are they supposed to actually rule? Was it June or July? Like I don't know when the, I don't know when it's supposed to come out. So that's the only confusing about it is it, it was written in February, and I'm trying to understand the context of it, but I don't know the inner workings of the Supreme Court. Do all nine of them come up with an opinion and push it as far as they want, or do they take sides? One's on on one side, the others on the dissent, and then they then they try to make it as vocal as they can. The, their best argument so the, and pass it around. I got. I, so the way, it, if if you've never read a Supreme Court decision or a brief, you've got the justice that writes the majority opinion and the dissent, yeah. And then you have the justice that writes the dissenting opinion. So if it's four three, 
whoever, and in this case, it would be, you know, um, oh, nine. Now this one's going to be five three. Okay, five because three. Because Kent- Kentucky right. Brown was not okay. So, it was well, it was it was February. Was I think early February was yeah, the she, date. But on she the wasn't on, she wasn't confirmed until March. No. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So there's nine. I got my numbers wrong, but you know, if, if it's Alito, Roberts, Kavanaugh, Coney Bryant, and uh, Gorsuch, Gorsuch, and Thomas. Thomas. And so, uh. Who's the chief justice guy? Roberts. 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 He actually, if it, I believe he's with the dissent. Yeah. Or he was trying to like limit it to options of. And that, and yeah. I think the dissent's going to be an interesting read as well, but. um, So yeah, it's, it's Alito, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, Comey Bryant, and uh, Clarence Thomas. Mm-hmm. Those are the five. Now, I, the other thing is because it's a draft, I wonder if Alito is the one, because uh, the one Alito wrote, is the one that got leaked. He wrote it back in February. Yeah, I know. That's I don't what, understand. Well, here's the thing though. Is that the actual thing? Like no one because we don't know what the vote was, is it possible he wrote one as the as the majority and then he maybe he wrote one in the dissent based on how the well, vote you, goes? Maybe I they would didn't actually, know how the vote kinda, went. I'm actually kind of surprised if it if it were they were to overturn it. That kind of well, let me ask you this. Let's let's say whatever got put out there ends up not being the official record of the of the court. I actually think if if the media didn't get didn't get this right, I think they're toast. Well, so the uh, well, what have they gotten right? By, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, but nothing. this is but this is that they're pushing this hardcore. No, I I, I disagree with. Politico on a lot of what they do. Politico is pretty like they don't. I, I don't think they they don't really play the anonymous source game. Like they Politico is pretty decent when it comes to that sort of thing. So oh, it's and, not and like, Roberts confirmed the authenticity of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like it's um, something that you know, like uh, you know, the LA Times or MSNBC came out with. Yeah. Well, I mean, he could. He could. Hey, TMZ is sometimes pretty good. <laughs> well, look, he confirmed that the document was real, but he didn't say. He said, it, "But this is not in any way, shape, or form the." Right. I mean, it, and actually, now that it's been leaked, it can get rewritten. But yeah. this is. But this is going or, back like three months ago. So, so what do they do? Do they put on their Supreme Court robes and have initiations for the new justice? Do they go play <laughs> golf or not? Like, what do they do? Like, I, that, that's what's the, confusing. There's keg stands and yeah, Kavanaugh's there, so it's probably gonna be right. Oh. <laughs> They got Jello a, shots, yeah, you know, doing shots off of someone's navel. <laughs> you think they got a Supreme Court shuffleboard team? From what I like, from P- everything Pickleball. that I heard, <laughs> the, from what I heard, the like the the nine Supreme Court justices, regardless of who it was, they were actually quite friendly with each other. Yeah, they all have friendly, colli- you know, collegial relationships. Only the media rips them apart. I, I wish the, but I wish like the American public could look behind the curtain sometimes. And realize that the people that they're they're pitching their tent behind, you know, when when the cameras aren't on, they're putting whiskeys back with someone from the other side. Now I'm not saying like I'm not, I'm not saying AOC's having beers with Ted Cruz, but you know, Ted Cruz and you know they agree in term limits. So. Cinema might be having some beers, or Joe Manchin and mm-hmm. uh, Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer might be ha- uh, not uh, Joe Manchin and uh. McConnell might be having some beers. Maybe McConnell and Schumer. You know what I mean? Like behind closed doors, when the cameras aren't on, a lot of those guys get along. Oh yeah. Well, who was, um, was it? Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill. Yes, they used to. They used to get together to fight, every night. Get together, yeah. And then drink whiskey and smoke cigars all night. Like they, they got a lot done too. Yeah. Well, you remember it was uh, Reagan and Gingrich. Didn't they used to get along really well, and that's how they ended up. Like they ended up. It, it was when uh, the Newt Democrats. Gingrich? Yeah, it, it, it was when Clinton and Gingrich. It was when Clinton, uh, the Dems lost the the House. 
Oh, 94? Yeah. That, that whole time? And they had to come up with that budget compromise. and Well, they actually balanced the federal budget. They had a surplus. They were operating on a we surplus. We had a surplus. Yeah, then Bush decided to go start two wars. But, no. Um, he <laughs> had, to fin- um, had to finish daddy's business. Yeah. But, business. <laughs> I mean, I think you'd find that more often than not. I mean, you know, I think, uh, you know, look at, the, look at even the you know professional sports. Those guys all know each other. Right. They don't hate each other. You know, they come from the same circles. Except for Brooks Kepka and uh, Bryson DeChambeau. <laughs> They're all stiffer, though. But, oh. they, but they all they all come from this. I mean, in D.C., they all come pretty much. They're all in, you know, they, they go through specific paths to get there. And then they all get to know each other. Whether they clerk here or was a page there or was a whatever or worked for this think tank or that thing. Or, and came up however they came up. But they're all pretty much, you know the same from the same places well and i've told this story that the um the movie recount with there's a scene there where the guy who plays james james uh baker who was uh h he worked for hw bush and then later on for w yeah he he told the story of how he was a lifelong democrat and his wife passed on, and HW kind of reached out to him and said, and they were friends, and he reached out to him and said, hey, you know, why don't you come work on my campaign get your mind off of things? And that's how James Baker ended up being a Republican. You know what's funny, though? And I think part of what we're living in now is in that era would everyone refers to the third party as a spoiler, and, and they, look at, they, they look at Ross Perot because he got 19% of the vote in 92 but if you look at it, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, Ross Perot, these are all centrists. We're, we're at the point in time where every year now we're we're contemplating options like Bernie Sanders against Ted Cruz. You know? <laughs> well, it's just it was, H.W. was different. Though. They've both gone in, in opposite directions, though. H.W. was a company man. He... You mean corporate? No. Like the CIA. Oh, yeah, of course. So under Reagan... Um, not under Reagan. Under under prior uh, administrations, he was actually, I think he was the head of the CIA. He right? was, yeah, director. Um, yeah, and so H H W was a was, and they used to call the CIA the company, and yeah. he was a company man. Um, well, I think if if using today's terminology, you'd probably say he's a deep state swamp rat. <laughs> I mean, look, man, I, look, I'm going to put it out there. I still think, I still think the deep state somewhat exists in some form or fashion, and I don't think anyone has ever heard of the names of the people that probably, you know, pull the pull the levers on that. Um, but it, but I've always said this. I've always used my mafia analogy. I'm okay with that. Just drop the crumbs down to the peasants. Are you trying to say that Joe Biden's really not the president of the United States? I, I think he's the. I, I'm not saying I think really? he's the president of the United States, but I also think that he's probably got someone very powerful in his ear. You mean you? you Just think, like all heads of state. You mean you think he actually knows he's the president? Oh well, look, I don't know. If, I don't want to get into that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if he's. Uh, I, I don't think. He does. I don't know if he knows. I don't either. I don't think he knows. Tuesday. I think it's a little bit of a weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> I mean, there's but. part of that, right? But yeah, there's there's definitely some times when he does not make much sense. Well, let's be honest. Everything he stood for his entire life and the policies that are going through are in direct contrast. I don't know if he's a savior to the party before he goes. Hey, I didn't help you out. I've been here for 52 years in politics. 47 years in the Senate. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to be 40 years old. When I the day I was born, he was already around doing this 11, 12 years. I mean, it's <laughs> well, that's what I don't understand. Like how how did he get so many votes? You have a 47 year voting history in the Senate, maybe in the House too, but a 47 year government career. You took a lot of votes. You authored a lot of bills. And then you you stand up there and say I'm for the I'm for X Y and Z, but your voting record doesn't show that at all. It doesn't matter. And everyone just says, "Oh well, he must be for this because he said he is." Hey, if it fits the narrative, I mean, he, the media is the media is your won. friend or not. But everyone knows what this dude's voting record is. It wasn't like it was secret. He won by being not Trump and not quite a dead person. Well, it, it, and, 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 but to look, but, yeah, but to look back though, it, it, and Trump won because he wasn't Hillary. 
Yeah. Like, I, I, we're, we're, we're definitely at the day and age where people are, are, they're not voting for someone, they're voting against somebody. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. That's all it is. Well, the other thing that went against, Hil- that hurt Hillary, though, is that with the exception to George H.W. Bush, we haven't had the same party hold on to the presidency more than eight years in a while. So after Bush won and four years later Clinton won, we had eight years of Clinton, eight years, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, eight yeah. years of, of W. Bush, eight years of Obama. So it's like people just get sick and tired of you. And I think a lot of us thought that we were going to get the same with Hillary. I assumed if Hillary won, we were going to have it for eight years. And I'm like, really, do we really want 16 years of of this garbage? I mean, that was my personal opinion. Now, I'm I'm conservative, but I'm middle of the road. I, I think all these people right now are just crazy. Well, that did you see that tweet that Elon Musk put out with the little stick figure drawings and like the the line and the he, conservative stays in the one place and the left keeps going, you know. And then finally, the last one, it's uh, woke progressives and he's oh, yeah. going, calling everyone a bigot. He's got a good sense you of know, humor yeah. for a guy on the spectrum, I'll tell yeah. you. But that. I mean, it's true. Like we've said it before. Alex and I have said it before, right, right here on this podcast. Like, we don't think that. I mean, I don't think I changed. My views have pretty much remained consistent. But um, the parties, the yeah, line move. Yeah. yeah oh, you're keep, absolutely right. Keep sliding. So all of a sudden, when I thought I was a a left of center type of dude, and now I'm like, you know, if you think about it, like I'm, <clears throat> you know, I'm for some form of of uh, of um, single payer health care you know that sort of thing and you know but which is a pretty uh left wing that's a bernie sanders position and all of a sudden i'm like uh, you left like the democrats are way past me so to to think of that something like that is just kind of wild um well the way we've always put it is the group that's gonna the group that's not shouting at me to think a certain way is the is the group I'm voting for at that yeah. time? Just like just like back when the Tea Party came about, they were crazy. Yeah, and they did, and then the the walking around with the tri corner hats and carrying the stupid muskets oh. like that didn't really help out because now you're just like sound crazy and now you look crazy and if you sound and look crazy, chances are you are crazy. But um, do any of these people have jobs though? Even before COVID, like what do these people do? Yeah, I. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, you know, I'd love to stand over there and hold hands uh, w- w- that are cemented and block traffic for five hours. But you know, I got to pick up my kid from daycare. I got to do this. I got to go. Yeah, we got to get to this practice, that practice. I mean, how, where do they get time to do this? Well, some of these people, I think, go from one thing to the next thing. I think even how I met your mother made fun of it in one of their episodes was pretty funny. Ted was dating a, a girl that that's all she did was go from one rally to the next, and and they kept forgetting which one was which. Yeah. I think the, the, I think recently, the government's been giving out a lot more money. No, you mean the eight point five trillion that we printed in the last eighteen months that <laughs> the, the federal has somehow government, devalued the dollar and and they've, has skyrocketed the price. They've, Everything they've printed more money in the last three years than has ever existed on Earth. So I mean to think that the. The economy hasn't just completely collapsed by now. is crazy to me. Yeah. But, I mean, who knows? There's still time. Oh, yeah. Or, apparently, there's supposed to be food shortages now well, because of the Ukraine war. <laughs> well, what was the thing? People said that Monopoly tried to warn us, and it says on the directions, what if the bank runs out of money? Some players think the bank is bankrupt if it runs out of money. The bank never goes bankrupt. <laughs> to continue playing, use slips of paper to keep track of each player's banking transactions until the bank has enough paper money to operate again. The <laughs> banker may also issue new money on slips. Ordinary paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, like another meme I saw. It was that it's that monkey. You know the monkey that like is looking and then looks away, and it says. Uh, how can you invest in you know Dogecoin? It's a joke. They just make unlimited amounts. <laughs> then it's like the U.S. dollar, like looking away. <laughs> so it, Warren Buffett actually was asked about cryptocurrency, and he said he would never buy cryptocurrency because it was it, it doesn't produce anything. Like, what do you think the U.S. dollar produces? Yeah, 
I mean, it's literally like you're living in Game of Thrones. The only reason why the U.S. dollar has any value is because a Lannister pays its debts. Yeah. That's the, we're, we're the Lannisters. <laughs> the U.S. will pay its debts. Maybe. <laughs> it's true. And we if don't. we don't, what are you going to do about it? Then we just turn into that big old bully on the, on the schoolyard. Yeah. What are you going to do if we don't pay? Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Well, hey, you've got, you've got like, you know, people yelling, shame, shame. So, yeah, we're just like... uh um, the the Lannisters in, in there. Well, it's not like anyone could do anything about it. Well, I shouldn't say that. There's obviously supply supply chain things that other countries could do. But if it ever came down to it, we really could just blow the crap out of people. Yeah. I mean, no one, no one can contest our Navy. Mm-hmm. And we can literally just shoot cruise missiles off of ships well, just a day be- and night. But it depends if Miley calls the... Uh, calls up the person that we're thinking of going after first and say, hey, I just want to let you know that we're going to go in on Wednesday about 7 o'clock. <laughs> Is that okay with you guys that work your schedule? Yeah, yeah. so uh, we're going we're gonna to just... I see uh, you didn't re- read the Evite that says we're going to invade in the north. Yeah. Uh, Listen. You want us to come in the south instead? Are you going to bring the potato salad or not? <laughs> you didn't sign up for it. <laughs> but yeah, it it's just a strange scenario there. But, I mean, as far as... As far as the Supreme Court thing, I, I, I really want to see what it says as far as what the majority says. The, but like, if it, it does get kicked back to the states, then the problem is that you got some states that are going to ban it outright. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to have, okay, now are people going to have to choose where they live based on what rights they want? People are doing it with, going back to Second Amendment, people already do that. People are voting yeah. with their feet. Yeah, but... It, it, this is a little bit different. This is emotional and personal, though. Right. I, I'm drawing it just to, you know, are people have to choose where they live based upon their views on abortion. Yeah, but... So, but I, 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 people, are, but people are already doing that now. But I can't really compare that with the Second Amendment because, like I said, there's no state that says guns are outright banned because the Second Amendment exists. They right. can't do it. It won't stand up to a, a, a court challenge. Exactly. This is This is saying... That something you had access to for 40 years, you now no longer have access to it, and it's a health, it, it could be a health issue. Mm-hmm. You know, what, we, Bob, what are we going to do, though? I mean, go go to underground bunkers, and Dr. Emmett Brown from Back to the Future is going to yeah. perform, ab- I mean, that, that's, perform abortions? That's ridiculous, that, too. But that's why I think overturning this is not smart. I will rarely quote Hillary Clinton, but I'm going to do it. She said, and I think it's, I think it's actually pretty accurate, in my opinion, where I stand. Abortions should be legal, safe, and rare. I think yeah. most people would agree with that. Well, even Bar- well, Barack, that Obama, yeah. Barack Obama said it in his inaugural address when he said that, you know, surely, we, I think it was, a, or, or it was a State of the Union, he said, surely we can, uh, regardless of where we fall on, on an abortion, we can all agree that, you know, uh, preventing unwanted pregnancies is good. Well, but no one ever goes to that point because the government is only a hammer and every every problem that we run into is a nail. Well, and like we saw with those polls, people who's are, really going to regulate this? Though? Well, pe- people are in favor of abortions being available in the cases of rape, incest, and a danger to the mother's life. Mm-hmm. Well, rape and incest only account for one and a half percent of all abortions. And danger to the mother's life is pretty uh, infrequent as well. I, I, I even let let's say it's five percent. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about six and a half percent of abortions are would fall into the category of what people are comfortable with. The rest of them and and the other the the responses that they got, re, and the reasons for abortion, the responses they got were because they couldn't afford. They didn't think they could afford having a baby. Having a baby would dramatically change my life. Uh, don't want to be a single mother or having relationship problems. Um, and then another one was they've completed their childbearing, meaning they didn't want, like they have kids and didn't want anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of those but, are the economic areas that are the ones that would be affected. I mean, if you, let's be honest, if if you're if you've if you've got a good amount of money, you know you you're not going to worry about it as much as somebody that's got issues I can, with, with, with well now that we're going to say look those people are SOL because those reasons aren't valid but no, they're that, absolutely but, valid but but here's the thing though before you went and 
and had a, a, a fun night, you knew there were other options. Yeah, there's it's, a lot it, of them. It, I, don't, I don't think there's, there's not many women out there that don't understand that they are able to bear children. They know that if they have a good time, there's a possibility they could get pregnant, especially during certain times of the month. Like, they understand that there are consequences. So, you know, if you understand you have the ability to become pregnant and there's no danger to your life, there's no danger to the fetus's life, and it's not rape or incest, as the polls indicate, there's not many people that are in favor of abortions being available for people who just regret what they did. That, no, no, that's I, something to think about. No, I get that, but are we going to just... Who's to say? And are we going to go down the list of every one of these? No, no. I, I, I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to be on the dis, decision making board. You know, like oh well, you know, you had a good time on Thursday, and there's nothing wrong going on here, so you got to have the baby. No, I don't want to be that. I, I, I wouldn't want that to say. Like, that's why I think Roe v. Wade kind of it, it was settled. It was done. Like, why are we going back and visiting this now? I agree. Well, it all came about from a. I think it was a. Missouri abortion, Missouri or Mississippi, Mississippi abortion ban or abortion law is what triggered the case, and that it it made its made its way all the way up to the Supreme Court. So that's what that's what started the this revisit. It was a re a way to revisit it. Another thing I don't like. So the Supreme Court made the decision with Roe v. Wade to allow for abortions to exist, right? This it, it, let's say they overturn it, and and give the responsibility back to the states. In my opinion, one Supreme Court is now overruling a former Supreme Court. In my opinion, the Supreme Court was the final decision maker on a topic. That's why whenever these nominees come up and, and go through their hearings, it's always, you know, "What do you think about Roe v. Wade?" And, and most of them, for the most part, say it's settled law, right? Because they're, they're, they they want to know if they're going to try and overturn it. Like that's really what the question they're asking. Sure. And I I'm kind of of the opinion. Look, if a former Supreme Court settled this and it's settled law, I'm not a fan of a current Supreme Court or a future Supreme Court being able to overturn a prior one. So, for example, let's say 20 years from now, the court now goes majority Democrat, or let's say the Democrats end up packing the court. Can they then go and overturn what this Supreme Court did? I mean, this is supposed to be the highest court in the land. And I get it, it's the highest court in the land at this time, and times change, but I don't to me this is a really sticky situation. It's almost like when the when the parties switch or when when the president switches and something was done by executive order, the new president comes in and writes a new executive order, and now what was good yesterday is not good today. Mm-hmm. Well, but my understanding, too, is that Biden already got ahead of it and is talking about executive orders from the Department of Public Health. And it's so I I don't really know even – I don't know how all this works. Well, that's, but that's, that's, you, shouldn't have to going down, you shouldn't have to go down that well, route. That brings, that, that We're going down a rabbit hole. We shouldn't. Interesting, if you listen to any conservative podcasters or shows um, in the last couple of days – one one was talking about this being all collusion that the highest levels knew knew that this that someone had obtained this this uh opinion this draft opinion this document and they were going to release it and you know the thing is when you look at it you you, you kind of say okay well I can kind of see it cuz like t- tomorrow Kamala Harris is speaking in front of a uh, pro-abortion, a pro-choice group. You mean they actually want her to speak to somebody now? Yeah. Emily's something, I think it's called. And then uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi had statements like instantly ready to go. So it's, when you look at stuff like that, you're like, hmm, how do they get all this stuff together so quick? Well, you remember in, in the election, and then that's the same thing with the, uh, right before the debate, Trump and Hillary the topic was supposed to be something else, but it ended up being the uh, that 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 video of him saying inappropriate things about women. Yeah, and the same thing is when it was Biden against Trump. What what's the? 
Was it for, was it Vanity Fair? No, not Vanity Fair. I I cannot. I can't think of it now. The ones that came out with the statements. No sources, by the way, of Trump saying things at gravestones about. Yes. And the second the information came out, Biden already had an ad with the quotes and everything. And it's, I think that's part of the reason people don't trust the media in general is, well, that, that, is, is they pick a side. Well, that, so that was like when. And they're in, involved in it. When, um, what's that guy from Project Veritas? James, James O'Keefe. James O'Keefe. So James O'Keefe gets raided by the FBI. As he's in handcuffs, he's getting called by the New York Times. Like, how did they even know that the search warrant even exists well, that's why, that's while why it's no going one, on? That's why no one trusts them anymore. But right. we now have the new um, <laughs> oh, misinformation. No. Oh, no. The disinformation governance board. The Ministry the, uh, of Truth. The Ministry of Truth. This, we're living in Harry Potter times. So, <laughs> listen, you talking about the CNN 2.0? Oh, no, have, you, have you heard about this? I have. Okay. Yeah. I'm just being <laughs> and, facetious. And, and the, the lady who apparently they put in charge of it is kind of, uh, I'm not going to say she's uh, crazy, but I, I, it's everything I'm, I'm reading says that she is yeah. super pro-censorship. Oh, yeah. Like, well, except yeah. Well, except she said several years ago there was a clip of her saying that you know if Trump had this power that it would be absolutely the government couldn't have this power and it always gets back. I always get back to it. You know, it seems like a great idea while you're in charge. At some point, you won't be in charge anymore, and it will backfire. Yeah. Just, I mean, look, ask Harry Reid if he really uh, if he uh, thinks he should have removed the filibuster for Supreme Court nominees. See, see how he's... Ask him about that one. Because you know, right now, he probably regrets that. Sure. Um, but, but, but I don't know what people are afraid of open dialogue. I, To me, growing up, liberal meant open-minded. I learn more from people who have a very different opinion on issues because I, I actually learn something. I'm not just listening to myself talk. I, I actually hear different opinions that are you know, like, you know what, you make a really good point. And I think people on different... Sides of the aisle will agree, but when you're censoring and you're when you're censoring certain information and sh- showing what you want and what you don't want people to hear purposely, it makes them question your your motive. What are you afraid of? If, if, if what this person said is so ridiculous that why not just have, let it it'll it'll go it'll get knocked out on its own? Instead, you're actually giving it more credibility by censoring it. Because you're making people think, why? Why Why are we not allowed to have this information? Are we living in Russia? Well, listen, well, now, if, well now you have your <clears throat> disinformation governance board that will tell you what to think. If you talk to a liberal now, they're still a very, they're, they're a party that's really open-minded. So long uh, as you agree with them. Uh, unless you, yeah, unless you think something that they don't think is right. <laughs> yeah, but the Democrats today, <laughs> though, wrong. they want a party where everybody looks different but has the same stuff coming out of their mouths. What are you afraid of? Why? Like, that's the, the cool thing about Tulsi Gabbard. She actually, she's got different opinions. I, she's not afraid of. Well, I, I think it's hysterical because you've got this party when Trump was in power screaming fascist, fascist, fascist. The guy didn't do anything fascist when he was in power, when he was the president for four years. All of a sudden, the tides turn. And now all of a sudden you you now have a ministry of truth. <laughs> you had on social media, on Twitter and on Facebook, you had the New York Times and Washington Post were the fact checkers for both of them, which are yeah. two liberal organizations. We're basically working for the state. Mm-hmm. Um, Amazon took off an app that was using Amazon Web Services because they didn't like that it was a conservative Twitter and mm-hmm. it was Parler. Yeah. Like people don't realize, Parler got taken off of the internet because Amazon because they use Amazon Web Services as their backbone, and Amazon said, "No, you're out." And oh, by the way, Apple and Google pulled them from the App Store mm-hmm. because they said they weren't moderating their content. Yeah, which they were. They had complied with every single request that was made of them, mm-hmm. but they took it down anyway. Yeah. 
So the side that kept screaming fascist, fascist, fascist is doing the fascist is stuff. Is doing the fascist stuff. <laughs> like you're you're controlling the media, that's a fascist move. Mm-hmm. You're trying to crush dissent, that's a fascist move. Yeah. And now and now even more so, like you're not even doing it overtly anymore with the New York Times and the Washington Post being the fact checkers for social media. Yeah. Now you're actually having a ministry of truth. Yeah. <laughs> in, adi- in, in addition, overtly wasn't good yeah. enough. Now we're just going to do it outright. Yeah. In addition to purposely inflating fuel price, energy prices to to rather than allow the the free market to dictate what should work and what doesn't work to to get what they want, they just believe in the government doing it all for you. It's like when Mayor Pete's up there and he's, oh, yeah, we'll just buy an electric car. All right, I'm going to go buy my daughter's first grade teacher a Tesla as a Christmas gift, you know? Yeah. yeah. He can, yeah, you know, we, we can afford five that, 60 grand? You know? $60,000 yeah. on a Tesla. Why not? Who, which is owned by someone they hate. Which, by the way, <laughs> never, never mind a Tesla. Barely anyone can afford a car now at all. Or even Anything. find one or get yeah. one. Yeah. It, you literally, I mean, for I think the average wait time if you order a car is two months to get a brand new car delivered to the lot for you. If you want a used car, the price is ridiculous. A th- some, and there are some port parts because they're available. A three-year-old used car is more expensive than the brand new one you can order. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's because utterly, you can have it right now. Like everything else our generation, but it doesn't has. make this. None of this makes sense. No, a depreciating asset is now an appreciating one. Now, it's not going to last forever. Eventually, that bubble is going to break. But now you've got well, some of those whoever new bought car- a car in 2019 looks like a genius. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, you've you've got some new car manufacturers now saying that they're never going to go back to full capacity at their at their plants. They're going to artificially. Well, I guess it's not artificial, but they're going to suppress the output at the plants so that they can keep prices. They they want people to still pay MSRP now. Yeah, which goes against the whole competitive nature of the dealer network. Mm-hmm. Now, some people say the dealer network is going away, too, which was why, and a lot of people didn't even realize this, Ford actually set up a separate company for their electric vehicles. Hmm. The reason why they did that was because if they released the vehicles under the Ford Motor Company, the original Ford Motor Company, they have to go through the dealer networks because that's how it's set up. But because Tesla came in and Tesla can sell direct to consumers, Ford's saying, well, why do we need a middleman anymore? So they created that Ford, the other Ford company, Mm -hmm. which is going to sell the EVs and they're going to sell them direct to consumers. That was the whole reason for them doing it. And it went right under the rug. Mm -hmm. No one even noticed it. Yeah. So I bet you in the next four to five years, you're going to start seeing Ford sell direct to customers for their EVs. And they're going to cut out the dealer network and the dealers are going to be pissed. Wasn't Saturn set up to do that too? No, no. So Saturn was all about. It. So Saturn was part of the GM network. Yeah, and they had to sell through. I believe they were selling through Pontiac dealerships. Okay. It became like Pontiac Saturn. The whole <clears> thing <throat> with Saturn was the price was the price. Yeah, you go there. MSRP is the price. No negotiating. And look, people do that with Carvana now. I mean, mm-hmm. not, I'm sorry, not Carvana. Carmax. Carmax has had that model for years. Yes, yeah. this is the price. This is the no price. haggle. Yep. Right, and people love it. I yeah. mean, people buy. People hate buying cars. They don't want the hassle, mm-hmm. and I get it. What they don't realize is is that if you go to CarMax, you might pay three grand more for the car. And but for some people, that three grand that maybe adds twenty dollars a month to your car payment. Yeah, and they, and, and they don't care because they save weeks upon weeks of times of going to dealership after dealership and negotiating. No, forget it. I'll yeah, pay the three and they, grand, and they don't add all kinds of fees and stuff. I think it's a ninety nine dollar. Fee, that's it. That's the only additional charge to... Yeah. It, it, I'm not saying it's a bad model. It, for people who don't want to bother with a dealership and deal... Because trust me, man, I've walked out of dealerships yelling at finance managers, I at salesmen. Oh, yeah. Listen, man, I, I embarrassed my wife one time so bad that she was moving. She's like, I'm never, she'll never go back to a dealership with me again. She makes me go to the dealership, pick up the car, bring it back home to her so she can test drive it. <laughs> and then I have to take the car back if she don't like it. Like that's how much she does not like going to dealerships with me. <laughs> if you ever need a hug, just let me know. <laughs> Listen, man. Hey, well, if I'm going, if I if I ever tell you, look, I'm going to spend the week trying to go buy a car. That's just the week to avoid me. 
because I will be pissed off at somebody at some point in that week. Now, no one likes no one likes going to the car dealer. I think I'm just going to buy old like Chevy 1500s and Tahoes and Suburbans from now on. They run forever. You know what I want? And you and I have talked about this. I actually sent you a picture of one. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, they had the conversion vans. Yeah. And it was basically like, a, it, it, like for Ford, it was the Econo line, but it was <laughs> but it was lowered, had the high top roof. Yeah. Had the TV in the back, super, like the Barca lounger chairs, the bed, the jackknife in the back, super comfortable to drive. You the could TV. Kill, kill miles in that thing. Man, I want one now. I, seriously, if I found like a really nice example, or someone like renovated one, and it wasn't like like killer prices, like GMC makes like a, a version of the Express van. Yeah, it's enormous. But it, if anyone ever goes in like Hoovy's garage, or the YouTube channel, he had one. It was so nice, man. It, it was it was way bigger than I would want. Like I'd want the old school conversion van. It's almost like an A team van. Yeah, but much nicer. So you're not you're not looking for like an overlander or something like that no no no. i i want like the Kill old miles i want the old the ford explorer before the explorer was a was a suv mm -hmm. it was the ford i think explorer was the company that modified the vans yeah, that was like the, what they call it a second stage manufacturer or something. yeah gm gm had one too I, I, yeah oh, I, we, began with an s i can't remember shoot they man. put all kinds of graphics on the side of it they, they put, it looked like an rv <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But man, I remember like I remember driving like riding one of those as a kid. Dude, it was so comfortable. Like like me and my brother would be in the second row, legs stretched out because it had leg room for days in that in the captain's chairs, playing Nintendo in the back. Yeah. <sighs> Let my dad do all the driving, you drive there. Chauffeur. You drive. <laughs> I don't know, Alex. But, with that hair, I'm thinking you'd be a good uh Volkswagen bus vibe I'm getting from No, nah, I can't do the bus, man. No. I can't it's too loud. It's not really you got in that GMC or that Ford Econo no, or whatever. It was like right on a cloud. Oh, it was beautiful. You're just you're gliding down the road. The Especially seats the, were so plushy. Oh, it was wonderful. Like, <laughs> just look man, I'm gushing. I'm gushing. Like if I could literally find one in nice condition, man, I might have to jump on that because those engines lasted forever. Yeah. And I don't care if it's a GM one. I don't care if it's a Ford one. I don't care. A nice, a nice, uh, nicely equipped one. And shoot, if it had the little LED running lights in the back too, get a well, little think mood of what light. They, think of what they do, they can do now with the rather than the the boob tube TV, like the flat panel TVs and stuff. You could. Some people find them and they and they straight up just gut them mm -hmm. and they turn them into like just a, basically a modern day version yeah. of it. Well, it, Jay, like Jake Cutler. The old quarterback for the Bears. That's what he drove. Was a, uh, was, it was a Sprinter van. It was that, a Sprinter conversion. Is that why yeah. she left him? <laughs> you know, after we, play. You know, after we record this, I'm going to look for one. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to go look for one. Where's your phone? You're probably doing Jay right Cutler. Now. <laughs> very salty man. I like Jay Cutler. You ever listen to his podcast? Now I have not. I think I heard he's pretty funny though. He is. He he is he is. He and I are probably spirit animals. I'll tell you one thing though. He. <laughs> Threw one of the prettiest balls. It just didn't seem like he cared. He if, if, always, if they caught her he, if he was intercepted, he's he like, had, ah, whatever. He had the RBF. He face. Always looked like he didn't give a shit. He did. <laughs> like he just was like, what? It, it looked like he should just like walk off to the sideline and light a cigarette. No, you ever, well, you they didn't see, have a meme you of that. the memes of him <laughs> when he was on like the bare sideline and they like and they and they photoshopped the cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you're looking at it going. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think. Listen, man, I, I, the best character in a movie, or one of the best characters in a movie for me, was from the movie The Replacements with Keanu Reeves oh. and the Place Kicker, Nigel Gruff. Yes, and he was he'd go out there on the game field, like with a cigarette in his mouth. Remember John Gruden and, and right, uh, Pat Summer? Yeah, right Pat before, Summer. right before the snap, he, he takes the cigarette, flicks it off, kicks a fifty-six yard field goal. It was awesome. <laughs> that was a that was a great movie. Yeah, it was underrated. Very underrated. I, Matt, I wish pro athletes did that today. I think there was a picture actually of one of the USFL guys. He was smoking a cigarette on the practice field. <laughs> I was like, I gotta watch it just for that guy. That is a great movie. But see, that's back in the day. Like they gotta bring that back. Yeah, like I want, I want athletes that are smoking on the field. Back in the seventies, <laughs> when they go in like in the locker room between periods and drink beer and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> like, well, maybe that'll get Colin Kaepernick back. He can kneel, smoke a cigarette, he'll get a job. Actually, 
if Colin would go, if he had with with his hairdo, that big puffy hairdo, if he could squeeze that under a helmet, have it popping off the back of it, and he's smoking a cigarette on his way out to the huddle. You're a lion. <laughs> you kidding me? When's the last I, time he's played? I, Five I, years. I put all animals on side. Well, didn't the didn't the Raiders just say they were going to offer him a? It was what's his face. It was uh, Mark Davis said that he'd be open to it if his coaching staff and G, if if Josh McDaniel and his GM wanted him on the team. He said yeah, I'd sign him if they want him, but I don't think they want the him. The only thing is he hasn't played in four or five years, but like, weren't people actually interested in him as a backup quarterback? But he's like, no, no, no. No, I'm that's exactly what happened to him. Yeah, so of course. He was he wanted starter money, and Seattle offered him money, and he didn't want He wanted to be a starter. Well, he wasn't going to start over... Um, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Well, there, there was a whole issue of the NFL set up a tryout or basically a showcase for him in Atlanta. I at, saw that. At, at yeah. Mercedes Field. Okay. And this is, I think, three years ago, maybe four. They set it up, and, all, and teams were going to go down that wanted to see him. 30 minutes before it's about to start. He says, I'm changing the venue. I'm at this high school. This is where I'm going to be. And you can come if you want to. And of course, no one's going to, no one's going to go two, three hours away to go watch him. I remember that. And then it, it was, everyone was like, okay, at this point, it's a publicity stunt. If you were serious about it, you would have shown up to the NFL facility with their, with, with who they had there for you to work out with or bring your own, but mm-hmm. at least show up to the right facility. Yeah. Like, you're some guy and you want millionaires or billionaires in the case of Arthur Blank to kowtow to you? Now that we're talking about Colin you're not Kaepernick. In reality. You know, I'm actually starting to like Jay Cutler a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Jay Cutler, surly individual, but he's going to be one of those guys that the further away we get from his playing days, the more rosy the picture of him is going to be. Because especially, especially as he kind of rehabs his image with his post career stuff, like with the podcast that he does. Okay, it, like he comes off as a very likable individual, even though he's still he's still surly Jay Cutler. <laughs> but he's but but people, I think people tend to like the surliness because he doesn't have a helmet on. Like he's he's not affecting the Bears' playoff chances. Now it's a likable surliness where it's funny. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, well, the Bears, the Bears stink, and they've always stunk since Erlacher. So <clears throat> that's a that's a whole. I feel like we're going down the, the football. Oh, yeah. Off but the that's rails. A, yeah, that's, that's far <laughs> from the politics, the cars. Over to, the, that's how we keep the uh, Jay the, Cutler's wife, the, 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 wife. the disinformation governance board off our tail. That's right. They don't. They won't know we what keep, we're talking it's called about. A, in, in Red October, commies. Hunt for Red October, the crazy Ivan. That's we just turned a crazy Ivan. Well, look, this is this is why we tell people if you're getting your news from us, you're not at the right place. <laughs> <laughs> but we're just as accurate as CNN. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for coming back. Um, also, thank you to Portek Limited uh, Wines and Spirits in the Baydell Plaza in Arnold, Maryland. Um, they've got a nice little website there. You can call them up, curbside pickup. Again, they got a nice selection of wines they just got in. Um, they also got their spring, spring craft brews in. Plus, they got the old faithfuls there. You got your Bud Heavies. Your Coors Lights that Josh loves. Um, the Bush Light. The Bush Light. Listen, Bush and Bush Light, for those of you that don't know, price is right. Taste is kind of smooth. Don't sleep on it. Yeah, I, it, it could be my summer beer this year. Portax great. It's the only place we go. Yeah, I, 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 I like that it's close. I like that they're helpful if I ever need help. They're great. Um, prices are good. I mean, look, craft brews are expensive. It is what it is. But man, if you want your, if you want your, uh, your regular buds, your Bud Lights, they got prices comparable to to anyone else in the area. So no reason to go any further than them. So thank you again for listening. Please share this with a friend. Share this on your Facebook, uh, on your Facebook news news feed, Instagram, um, anywhere you got social media. If you can, just shoot a link out for this episode. We appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.